Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our live time online e-worship services for the fall. A special thank you goes out to Kevin Fuller, our Director of Operations, and the editor of the summer services to make them into the best of series that many of you worshipped with over this last month. This being Labor Day weekend and the first Sunday of the month, we are celebrating Holy Communion so that you may want to collect whatever you will use for your communion elements, bread and juice or water or wine or crackers or toaster oven pop-ups. You know, remember, it's your intent that makes it sacred. Jesus is always welcoming us at the table every day. It's our time with Jesus, not what you put into your mouth that makes it a sacrament, right? So today, in order to prepare ourselves for worship, to get us in the right head and heart space, I invite you to think about the summer that's drawing to a close. And after I ask our centering question, push the pause button on your device, if you would so that you can reflect on this for as long as you want or share your thoughts with others if they're worshiping with you. It's a nice way to build community when we share those answers. And then when you're ready, release the pause button and we will continue with our call to worship. Okay? Okay. Our centering question for today is this. Where did you experience the Spirit of God this summer? Hmm? Think about that a little. Hopefully there were many times. Where did you experience the Spirit of God this summer? What did it look like? What did it feel like? Were you aware at the time that it was the Spirit of God or was it only in hindsight that you realized it was God? Ready? Pause. Welcome to worship on this Labor Day weekend. We will begin, as we always do, by calling ourselves to worship in the presence of the living God. Please join me responsively by reading the bold print as you see it on your screen. We are standing on holy ground. All those who have gone before us have witnessed to the love of God. We are challenged to be people of loving service, so we gather as a community of compassion and hope. Jesus calls us to care for each other tenderly and willingly. By this caring and sharing, we will be known as followers of the way. By our example, others may be led to lives of peace. Open our hearts and minds this day to your word for us, we ask, O Spirit. Let us praise the living God. And now, please join me in singing our opening hymn, We Are Standing on Holy Ground. Standing in his presence 
presence on holy ground. We recognize that God is the creator and author of our lives who invites us to find peace in walking on the path with Jesus. Please pray with me. Orchestrator and choreographer of summer sunshine and autumn harvest, be with us this day as we gather to encounter your word and your way for us. Remind us that we can place our trust in your eternal love. Enable us to be more effective in our witness to that love by word and deed. Guide our steps and pick us up when we fall. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading was adapted from Romans chapter 12, 9 through 21, and it comes from the Message Bible. In his letters to the beginning church in Rome, Paul tells us how to live as followers of Jesus. Let us proclaim this good news together responsibly. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled in a flame. Be alert servants of our teacher, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help those who are in need. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you get the best of evil by doing good. Behold, the Spirit's message for us today. Thanks be to God. Okay, so first off, it's great to be back. Second and foremost, when I was traveling around the Northeast um, for a little bit of my vacation, I spent some time with my brother and sister-in-law in New Hampshire. And every time we get together, of course, we, we talk about our family and what it was like growing up. Now, I'm the youngest of four kids. So I kind of grew up with a lot of people who knew what they were doing. And I remember getting things or building things or cooking things. And everybody had their own ideas about how it should be done. Sometimes they'd start like to put together a, a piece of furniture or something and They'd never, ever look at the paperwork. My dad, my sister, one brother in particular, kind of look at it and they'd just be able to picture it, get the tools they needed and start putting it together. And sometimes it would go effortlessly. <clears throat> but more often than not, there would be some backtracking along the way because they'd have to undo something that they did in order to do things in a different order so everything would fit together right ever happened to you? And <clears throat> in those occasions when they really got stuck, our mother, who had been kind of watching things from the wings, silently proud of how they were doing it, and yet at the same time, <sighs> sometimes smirking a little when they'd have to backtrack, when things really got stuck, they would, they would look and she would just say, what do I always say? And we would dutifully respond, 
Read the directions. So do you have somebody like that in your life? Or maybe it's you yourself. Someone who says you could avoid so many problems and save yourself time if you would just read the directions from the beginning before you start. Who knows? Might save yourself some time. <clears throat> well, when it comes to our faith, how to live as Jesus instructed, Paul wrote the directions. I mean, that's really what this is all about, right? What we just read. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil and hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. In other words, be genuine. Be authentic. Don't be fakey with people just because you want to court their favor. Now that can be tricky sometimes. You know, what if you have a friend that you've had forever and they fall in love with someone you think is really bad news for them? Well, Paul would say that you need to find a way to be honest with them. But that doesn't mean that you have to be cruel or judgmental. It doesn't mean, you know, you disown them. Unless, of course, there's some kind of threat to you. But it's possible to share discomfort with people by using I statements, things that begin with the word I, I feel, I think, I wonder, I've noticed. You know, maybe I've noticed that when you're with so-and-so, you just don't seem like your old self. Do you feel that way or am, am I just imagining that? How is this related to our faith, you ask? Well, Jesus tells us to live, lead lives of integrity to live as he does so that people will know where you stand on things so that the spirit can flow through you and be authentically represented. But Paul says, don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of our teacher, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help those who are in need. Be inventive in hospitality. So keep track of our own state. Kind of monitor how you're, how you're doing. What do I need in order to stay healthy? In order to bring my best to life? So I can be his ambassador in the world. We have to take care of ourselves and not give up. We have to be alert to what's going on, both inside and outside ourselves. And when things get hard or challenging, don't quit. Those are the times that we should be praying even harder. We're supposed to help each other, take care of each other, be creative in finding ways to do that. Well, maybe you're not a baker, so baking cookies for someone isn't what you would probably choose to do. But maybe you could find a favorite poem or saying that you like and have it framed for them as a gift. Or maybe they'd just like time with you to go for a walk or to talk on the phone. Try new things. Be inventive. Bless your enemies, he says. No cursing under your breath. Now that's a huge thing. I think in our country right now, that's, that's a huge thing that's lacking. It's so easy for us to fall into the trap of being nice to someone's face but then talking about them behind their back, it happens in churches. Don't pretend it doesn't. We call those parking lot conversations. We wouldn't have them in church. <clears throat> and of course, my mother would always remind me, if they're talking to you about someone else, then they're talking to someone else about you. Don't be that person. Try to give everyone a break. Cut them some slack. We want slack cut for us, right? And we've all had bad days or bad weeks or even bad years, I think. So, the instructions continue. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. 
And along the same line, he says, don't hit back. Don't hit back. Whether it's with your, your hand, your fist, or with words, don't hit back. It might be a struggle. But work to discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody, he says. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. That's the whole judge not lest ye be judged part. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if she's thirsty, get her a drink. Your generosity will surprise them with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. I mean, this is like the instruction book for how to be a good person, how to be a follower of Jesus. These are like the code of ethics for the KOG, the kingdom or the kingdom of God. And we can practice right here in this lifetime. And we should. We should practice. We should get really good at these things. Love from the center of who we are, just like Jesus did. And with that, let us prepare ourselves to go to the table of his love. The place where he meets us and welcomes us to sit with him for a while. Sit and, and chat and talk. Sit and get recentered. Get our priorities straight um, about how to be in the world and to get along with each other. And it's at his table that we get regrounded in his grace, washed in his love, his forgiveness, that we find our anchor point so we can go out and live this way. It's at his table that we find our well-being. It's time to once again read the directions and say yes to building our lives the way God wants us to. And that's what we are invited to do at his table. Amen. Amen. As God has blessed our lives with abundant love and gifts, let us bring our tithes and offerings to this place, seeking to help others, to offer comfort and hope. Let us place our offerings before God. And so we pray together, God of all mercy and compassion, bless these gifts lovingly offered, bless those who give them and those whose lives will be touched by them, we ask. Help us to use these gifts for ministries of hope, reconciliation, and justice love through our church in order to be your kingdom on earth within our community our nation, and our world. For we dedicate all of everything to you. Amen. And so as we make that journey within ourselves to where we know we will find Jesus and his table, where we will sit with those who have come before us and those who will come after us, let us sing together and let the music transport us through our hymn we gather here in jesus name andy we gather
gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here, we in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. Though unseen he meets us here, in the breaking of the bread We'll gather soon Where angels sing We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King Now we anticipate The feast for which we wait Come take the bread, come drink the wine Come share the Lord Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Friends, people will come as we have come from east and west and from north and south on this Labor Day weekend. White collar and blue collar, no collars at all workers and management, those who have jobs and those who yearn to have them, those who have made their life's work creating a home and raising children. We will all come to sit at this table. Our Savior invites those of us who trust him and those of us who are just learning how to trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. The Spirit be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the living God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our Creator. You have given us life in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. When we were children, running footloose through grace, you loved us, tender God. Dappling the night skies with the bright stars of morning, teaching us to walk the paths of that first dawn, telling us of your dreams for all that you created. When in our hurry to greet you, we fell, skinning our knees, you lifted us up in your arms, holding us to your cheeks, with wet, wet with joy. When we missed your calling us to wash up for dinner, you came and found us, taking us by the hand to feed us from Eden's abundance. But when we grew up, we knew more than you, turning to the idols of wealth and power who promised to serve us even as they shackled us, giving ourselves over to anxiety's sweet caress. Yet you are God, not a foolish human, you remain in our midst, not to punish or destroy, but to reach out and to bring us home to your heart. Therefore, we joyfully lift our voices with those who have gone before us and those who stand beside us, singing our praise for your great love. Holy, holy, holy God of steadfast love, all creation thanks you for your wonderful works. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes to lead us on the way. 
Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of infinite tenderness, and blessed is the Christ, the perfect human one, yet true God from true God. Breaking the enslaving bonds of sin, he binds our wounds with cords of compassion, walking with us when we have lost our way. He shows us the paths to the kingdom. Stripping himself of glory and honor, he clothes us in a new life of faith. Leaving aside his equality with you, he became one of us, so we might be one with you. Remembering that you did not give up on us, or hand us over to sin and death, but showered us with your mercy in Christ Jesus, we take the bread of life and the cup of grace and joyfully celebrate that mystery we call faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Compassionate God, pour out your gracious spirit upon us and upon these, your simple gifts. Fill us with the broken bread that we might be made whole. Touch our parched soul with, with your cup of salvation so we might proclaim your gospel. Let us pray. Holy Brother, today you have called us together and you remind us of the sacred labor which we undertake to share your word and your healing presence of reconciliation with all. We believe that you are birthing a new heaven and a new earth, and we feel that growing presence within us. Help us to believe in that time and that reality, even when we can't picture it now. Help us to trust you. Unite us now at your table and in one loaf and a common cup, make us your people. Keep us faithful to your teachings, Jesus, we ask. Give us strength to serve you as we serve each other, and hear us as we pray with one voice, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Holy Spirit, come into this bread and this cup. Transform these ordinary objects as you transform our hearts and lives. Pour out your grace upon us so we overflow with your love. Keep us from saying empty words of praise and fill us with the humility of your Son, we ask. <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Please feel free to hold up your elements and do as I do. At the end of the meal, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and then passed it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you break bread, remember me. After that, he took the cup, filled it with wine, blessed it, and passed it to them, saying, Look, friends, 
This is the wine of justice and love, filled with my spirit. Whenever you drink this, remember me. This is the bread of heaven, food for our journey. Happy are we who are called to this table. And Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Come this day and be fed. Let us pray together. Loving God, we thank you for feeding us at this table of your holy light. Following the examples of Christ, we offer you our best selves. Keep us from coming to this table for solace alone, and remind us that we come here to touch base with all that we say we believe. Bring us into alignment with your will and then send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work for your justice love in the world by living lives dedicated to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So let us kind of sing that prayer, shall we? Our closing hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Andy.
The trouble comes when we think we know how to put things together without the directions, right? Sometimes we break things or we lose parts or we, well, it's just never as good. It never looks the same as it does in the picture unless we follow the directions. So let's go from here, mindful of the fact that as human beings, we, we don't always know how things are going to fit together. But if we read the directions, if we follow the directions, if we pay attention to how the Spirit leads us to live, everything, everything will be better, we will be better, and everything will fit. So let us go with God, walk with Jesus, live with the Spirit, keep reading the directions for how to live as children in the light, and let the church say, Amen. All right, everybody, I have a nice postlude for you today. Stick around. It's great to be back. Look forward to seeing you again next time. And until then, God bless. Take care and bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here, and we are glad that you chose to worship with us. We're grateful for your prayerful support of our ministry. We're a small congregation of about 50 members in upstate New York, and since the COVID shutdown, we are exploring new ways to be the church in the 21st century. If you're watching this, we already think of you as part of us, and we would love to hear from you because all of us are united by the spirit of the living and loving God. Should you find yourself in the Rochester, New York area, we would welcome you to worship with us in person. Please check our website calendar for our location and an interactive map. If you would like us to pray for you, please send those joys or concerns to me through our website, which is noted at the end of this video. The nice thing about online worship is that we can access it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you wake up in the night or you've had a hard day at work, 
If the kids keep you going and your only alone time is when they take a nap, come, pray with us, sing, and hear a reflection. God knows no time and distance. Our church is open 24-7 online. Occasionally, we have other services and reflections that we post online as well. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Irondequoit Presbyterian Church. If you are in a position to help support us financially, your gifts may be sent to us as seen on your screen. We hope that you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you back here again. Just remember, Irondequoit is where the land meets the water, and Irondequoit Presbyterian Church is where our faith meets new life. Okay, God bless, and bye for now.